Hey, what's going on, YouTube? I ain't saw you in a while. Back again, no. Untouchable of Christ, man. Mr. Mind himself in the flesh. How you all doing tonight? Oh, man. Just got to start off by saying, you know, being the Untouchables for Christ member, you know, the one we believe is is Christ. And it seems, and what's pissing me off is I'm looking, and it seems like the battle is not between the believers of Christ and the people who are anti-Christ, but it's more of a battle between Christians and other Christians, and I don't like that. I find myself having to prove, you know, more for Christ to Christians more so than the others, and the others being the anti-Christ people, people who do not who do not believe that Christ is the Messiah, and that's kind of funny. You know, I found myself today arguing. So I had to cut myself shortly, but um, arguing a point for Christ to a so-called another Christian, you know. But you know, the point of the story is that the the Bible says that the kingdom of God will be preached to every nation. So whether they find it out now or in the future, or after this life on earth, they will find it out, and that's what I'm praying for, which is uh, God's will. So um, long story short, though. I'm going to tell y'all how cold Christ is right now. And this just one. This just, I'm not going to just give you a sermon, but I'm going to let you know that uh, we're dealing with something powerful. And people tend to put a lim tend to put a limit on the Christ when, when you talk about Jesus. Jesus Christ. Christ is not a last name. Christ is the office that Jesus held on earth. The Christ is forever. Jesus, like he said before Abraham was, I am. He's been here. We all know that Christians. He's been here before we were, before we were thought of. He is the creator of all things. Through him, all powers, principality, principalities and dominions run through him. That's Colossians said. But let me make a long story short and point in case. Blake, um, let me ask you, you as, a, as the untouchable for Christ man yourself, have you ever um, heard that, you know, have a Christian ever told you they're scared of dying? Uh, yeah, people have, but uh, but you, you know, you're not you're not fully there if you're scared of dying. Well, no, nah, not necessarily. That's not that's the. It's, I ain't it's saying not, I'm not saying that you're not saved. I didn't say you would, but you said you're not totally there, and I have to disagree. That's All why. Right. I, that's why. Yeah, because I'm, finna, okay, I'm finna hit. That's why I say I'm finna hit them real hard now, because I'm finna start addressing issues that. A lot of people are scared to address. Yeah. A lot of people don't feel comfortable addressing. I'm finna try to get to those topics. Mm -hmm. That's what us untouchable for Christ members have to do. And I'm finna stand up for Christ. And um, I want to say, I, you know, a lot of people are scared of, of are afraid of dying, which mm -hmm. is nothing wrong with that. That's human. That's mm -hmm. what we are. Right. You know, um, I once at a time was afraid of my. I was afraid of dying. I might still be. Mm -hmm. You know, I might still be. And I'm 100% plus Christian. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for those who are, point in case, for those who are scared of dying or afraid of dying, it's okay. Why is it okay? You know, where do I go when we die, Drew? Why do you say it's okay to be afraid of dying? You, I heard people telling me that God says it's not okay. Well, I'm here to say that's not true. But it is only okay to be afraid of dying if you know who has the power over death and life. And that's Christ himself. And that's what that's what the point I was making earlier. I'm, I'm tired of people downgrading my Christ when they don't even know him. Let me show you how powerful this man is. You know, we it, it is a point to man. Every man wants to die. Point in case. Sin did that. But when our loved ones leave us, it's okay. We grieve for the moment, but it's okay. Let me show you why it's okay. Because the person who has power over life and death, is our, which is Christ, is also on our sides, our being the Christians. Let me show you right now. This is straight from the book, so no paraphrasing, no nothing. In the book of John, you don't have to turn there, but right now, Chapter 11, verses 25. 
Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Speaking of her brother, Lazarus, mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her then, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die. That's point in case. Now, um, don't ask me, you know, how do we never die when Jesus just you know when my gr or how do we know how can Jesus say we don't ever die when my grandmother just died last year or something? Mm -hmm. You asking that, then that's when you asking what is death? What is death? I don't know. I'm not an eternal being yet. I, I don't know, but I do know what this man said is true, and that's why he asked Martha, did she believe him? Now we look at that death as oh I'm getting old, I'm getting old of old age. It's time to pass this earth. Okay, that's death to us, but. A lot of cases when people went through that in the Bible, Jesus said they were asleep. Mm -hmm. So let me show you this right here. And the Father say, you know, the book says, you know, he that believed in Christ should not die but have everlasting life. Long story short, check this out. Don't be scared of death just yet. I got something else for you. Jesus also said this. Let me show you how he has power over life and death. The person who we believe that is the Messiah, the only one. He is God. Let me show you how he has power over life and death and why he is God. And don't ask how is that either because you might not comprehend that just yet. But listen to this. I say unto you, this is Jesus. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. Now, in order for Mary, I mean Martha, to believe what Jesus said when he said, I am the resurrection and the life, he that believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he asked Martha to believe him. He, Martha didn't have the right to believe Jesus if he didn't prove himself here on earth. Why would she have to believe this man when he's talking bogus? If he's talking crap that ain't true, I wouldn't believe the dude either. So... Obviously, he did something before for her to believe that. Well, did she believe him? You know, we're going to get to that later. But like I say, the power of death, the power of death and life is in this man. And let me show you. Now, he said, the hour is coming. And now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man. <laughs> and they that here shall live. Now, let me see. if Let's see if we can prove this theory. I'm going to take you right now to Mark. You know, we all know the story, but let me take you to Mark chapter 5. Check this out. And he looked, and he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her daughter, Thy faith hath made thee, thee whole, go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troubles you the master any further? They saying, There's no hope. This girl dead. You know, why, why bother anyone? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Don't be afraid, only believe. Even though it's hard that your daughter did, just believe. As soon as Jesus, and he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John the brother of James. And he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he said unto them, why do you make you this a dough and weep? This damsel is not dead, but sleeping. Now, like I said earlier, what we might perceive as dead is not necessarily dead to the, the other beings, the higher being, being God, being Christ. That's why I said, don't say, hey, you know, my how do you say we shall not we shall live and not die? How can Jesus say that when my grandmother just passed or my father just got killed? Or my brother just got hit by a drive-by. Or, or my sister just got hit by a hit and run. Because what we perceive might not be the same as how Christ or the Father perceives it. 
Like I said, Jesus right here asked, why do you make this a dough and weep? This damsel is not yet dead, but sleep. And, and they don't even, they don't know that. He, he talking to them, See, he talking to them like they that's should. That's why though. I said, listen to this. And they laughed him to a scorn. <laughs> I would have laughed too, though. I yeah. would have laughed too. Yeah, he throw, yeah. yeah. I'd be like, he throw. But listen, listen. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kami, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straight away the damsel arose, man, and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years old, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. Check this out. Now, 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 hold on. Before any conclusions come, I said, in order for Martha to believe Jesus when he asked her, do you believe this, that I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believe on me should not die, even so shall have everlasting life. You know, in order for him, her to believe that, he had to prove himself previously. And what did he say? Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the son, the voice of the son of God, and they that hear shall live. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he did speak to this little 12 year old girl and said, arise. And after he said that, she walked and they were astonished. And you telling me this man don't have power over the dead and the living? He might not after this. So let me just get you in one more. We all know this story, or at least I hope we do. Check this out. Okay, now this is coming from Luke. Chapter 7. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out. The only son of his mother, which Shane is the only son, and she had and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. Excuse me. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bearer. And they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. Uh oh, same stuff again? Same word? Same stuff. <laughs> and he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. Oh, oh gee. So anyway, long story short. That's two times. Okay, so let's say that the first story wasn't convincing enough. You know, that's beginner's luck for Christ. <laughs> you know, let's um let's go on and say, hey, what about this second this second little piece? You know, that luck don't come like that. I mean, we being honest here, this man just proved himself twice. And you telling me this man don't have power over the the dead and the living? Mm -hmm. I might have to disagree with you, you know, Antichrist. I might have to disagree. Mm -hmm. But that might not be enough, you know, for, for Martha right now. She might still think that, hey, you know, I don't know. My brother's finna die. You know, as we know, when Martha asked her that, she was dealing with a death of her own, you know, her brother. And, you know, they wanted, they wanted this man to live again. Even though we shall die, like the Bible says, it is appointed to man once to die. All men. So let's see what we can do here. I mean, I didn't. Jesus, and I'm speaking from Jesus' tense. I didn't prove to you before, but I got to ask you again. So let's continue with Martha. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And I know Christ is asking us that too because even though we just saw the miracles, we didn't witness, we didn't read the scriptures, hey, not a lot of people believe. If it was so, everybody would be a Christian, but that's not so. You still